Those of you saying, that's an Easter hymn, you're right, but every Sunday is a celebration of Easter. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that uh, we can have our confidence in you, renew that confidence today as we listen to your word, as we gather at your table, that we might live confidently. In your name we pray, amen. Young man was being installed, and uh, I was talking to him beforehand. It was his first call, and he said, PB, I'm scared. I don't know if I can do this job. I said, what do you mean? He said, I don't know if I can really be a a pastor and and do it well. I think my response surprised him. I said, that's good. He said, what? What? So I was, it's good that you're scared. How is that good? I said, well, I've been pretty much scared every call I've taken. Overwhelmed. Felt like it was beyond me, and that's been good for me because God used that. So I had no choice but to rely on him. God is going to stretch you, and he's, he's going to put you in situations where you can't do the job so that You have to rely on him. You're about to find out what amazing things God can do through you. Since that's what today's reading from Ephesians chapter 3, as we continue our, our look at life together, that's what it's about. But before we get into the text itself that Kyle read, I want to share with you the verses right before it, because these are verses in which Paul talks about his call. He says, of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given Preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. What a daunting task. God Set before Paul. For one thing, Paul felt completely unworthy. He said, This call is a gift of grace. That means it's undeserved. He called himself the least of all the apostles, and, and rightly so, because Paul had tried to destroy the church. He had rounded up Christians, thrown them in jail. He presided over the killing of the first Christian martyr, Stephen. He didn't deserve. He was the least likely of all the people that God could call to do this task. He was completely unworthy. Also, second thing, his call would make him an outcast. Paul was to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Now that may sound, so what? You know, we're all Gentiles here. But for a Jewish person to have anything to do with the Gentiles was just out of the question. They despised one another. And so by, by going and bringing the gospel to the Gentiles, Paul would be despised by his own countrymen, his own people, and the Gentiles would treat him with suspicion at best. Paul was taking on a job that would make him an outcast. And finally, the third thing that made it daunting is Paul would have to start from scratch. 
You know, where Paul was going, it wasn't like when we send church planters out today, pastor comes in, he takes a few people with him, and he starts a church in another spot. There were no few people to take with him. He was going into places where there would be no people who knew Jesus Christ, where there would be people who had no, basically no knowledge of, of the Jewish religion or of the Jewish scriptures, where there would be no churches that would be a, a starting place for him. He was starting from scratch, and so all these things together made it a daunting task. Whereas when Paul went out there into the world and, and he shared the gospel, he, he was going to face persecution and rejection and imprisonment and all sorts of challenges. God called Paul to a job he couldn't do. He didn't deserve and he couldn't do. He had no choice but to rely on God. That's where our text comes in. Listen to this text. Because of this, for this reason, because of the call I was given, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that you may dwell in he, Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul takes the call and puts it back in God's hand. He knows, yeah, that he's the one going to be preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ, but he also knows that it's God who will be rooting their faith in Jesus. It's God who will be at work in their inner being. It's God who will give them faith, who will fill the people with his fullness. It's God who will make of them a people in whom the manifold wisdom of God is made known. Paul faces his calling confidently. Confident he can't do it, but God can that's what he says in those words that are so famous at the end of this chapter. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's the key to living confidently, trusting that God can do what we can. So I want to ask you, what are the challenges you face? What are the things that are in front of you that at times overwhelm you? Where are you afraid? I can't handle this. It can be any number of things. They come and go in life, don't they? I can remember when we were having a child, our first child, when Ben was coming to the world, I was scared to death to even hold a baby. Never done that before, let alone to raise one. Is that where your fear is? Is it being a parent? Is it a subject at school? I hated chemistry and algebra. That's why I'm a pastor. <laughs> Is it some struggle in your life? People who struggle with alcohol will tell you that they feel powerless, that their life is unmanageable. 
Is it something like that? Is it someone in your family that you want to talk to about Jesus, but you don't seem to be able to get anywhere and nothing seems to change and you don't know how to do it? Is it an illness? Is it a new job? Is it getting old? Retirement. There are things that scare us. I was, I was scared to death to move to Germany to live that far away from family. I don't know about Linda, but I was. I was terrified as a little boy of my dad dying. What are those things in your life? Are you like the man who grew up believing that any time when he was a kid, any time he was given a, little to- a new toy, he knew he'd eventually break it? Or as a man, he came to believe that any time he was in a great situation, he would eventually ruin it? Is that you? Raises the question, doesn't it? How can weak, faulty, messy people like you and me possibly live confidently in the face of life's impossible challenges? The answer for us is the same as it was for Paul. Go to God. Bow your knee. Admit your struggle. Swallow your pride. Tell him you can't do it without him. Because he's the one, not you, not me, he's the one who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us. I want you to think of all the reasons you have for trusting him. One is, he loves you. He loved you so much, he gave his son. His son loves you so much, he gave his life. Second thing is, he can do anything. He raised Jesus from the dead. Nothing is impossible for God. Third reason Whatever mess you've made, he's already cleaned it up. No matter how unworthy you are, he loves you. No matter what sin you've committed, he forgives you. There is now no condemnation for you who are in Christ Jesus. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. He remembers our sins no more. That's what the Bible says. See, and that's the other thing. You have his word. You have his promises. There's the fourth reason. He keeps keeps his promises. He does what he says. No matter how many promises God has made, they are all yes in Christ Jesus. Like that young man, I would tell you it's okay to be up against things that you can't handle. I would tell you In fact, that it's good for you. And it's good for me. You know, people take that passage in the Bible, and I'm kind of skewing off here for a second. In the Bible it says, you know, uh, no temptation has overtaken man, right? That, that that, That it's not common to man, but God will provide a way of escape. They take that and they mean God won't give you more than you can handle. Of course he gives you more than you can handle so that you and I have no um, choice but to trust in him. That's what he does to stretch us and to grow our faith and help us learn that he keeps his promises. That young man, he did fine as an associate. And then he planted a church. Now he's the head of a not-for-profit mission in the city where he lives. That man couldn't do it. But God can. Folks, That's what Paul wants us to know. God is not kidding when he calls us to difficult things. And neither is he kidding when he promises to help us. You know, you may think, 
oh, how can our church do this family ministry? It's different than what we've ever done. Are we going to be able to get this? I don't know, but I know he can do it. I know at times I've been scared ever since the Crouches took their call and, and Pastor Bauer retired. Lord, I don't know if I can handle it. Who are you kidding? But he's not. I think that's why he puts us to do life together. So that we can encourage one another along the way. So that we can remind one another, no, you can't do it, Wayne. No, you can't do it, Kyle. But God can. So that he can use us to encourage one another and he can teach us to trust him. See, that's how faith grows. When we take on the calls that he gives us, the calls that are beyond our ability, and put ourselves in his hands, when we say to one another, fear not, go ahead, step out in faith, because he is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen? Amen. Amen.